Hey, y'all. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. I'm overwhelmed. Hey, y'all. Oh, wow. It is a lot of people in here. This is my first time going live. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. Oh, this thing is going so fast. Okay, we're going to jump into the um, Tipsy Talk Tuesdays. Do y'all got y'all drink? Y'all got y'all drink a drink? This thing is going so freaking fast. I can't even see who in here. Why is it going so fast? Hey, everybody. This ain't like Instagram. It's different. Okay, so everybody saying, hey, hey, y'all. Um, I am Jay, totally Toya, the Philly family, D Cummings, Hershey Beauty. I'm seeing my girls in here that I always see in the comments, period. Hey, Savings with V, Malicious, Kendra, Uniquely Human, Shanika Anderson, Tierra Nikel, Lucky Urbana, Sunday Rose TV. So, okay, so let me tell y'all how this, can y'all hear me? Y'all can hear me, right? Microphone and audio working pretty good. Okay, so I actually been editing for the past two hours, right? And I was getting ready to make the video go live, um, like a regular sit down. OMG, thank y'all. Y'all sending money and everything. Thank y'all. Y'all so sweet. I love y'all. So I was getting ready to do a video where it was just going to be like a regular sit down chit chat video. Um, me and my pajamas because we having a little pajama party tonight. Right. And then I was like, Peyton, go live. You never go live. I don't know. I, th I think it's because I'm a little nervous, but I was like, go live. It'll be I think it'll be easier and you can go live on time because the video was definitely not going to go up um, before 10 because it was still uploading. So we're going to answer the questions that y'all posed um, on Instagram and YouTube. I would say y'all can ask questions in here, but the way that chat moving so fast, chat, I wouldn't even see it. Karen adjusting real good. She adjusting real good. Thank you. So I got some uh, questions that I had screenshot off of Instagram because y'all still sending in questions from both Instagram and uh, YouTube. So. I'm going I'm to start with um, uh, the first question. So one of the PayPal's asked, how do you know if a friend is envious of you? I'm currently reevaluating one of my friendships. For me, I don't really be knowing that a friend is envious because I don't like to say people jealous of me. I don't I definitely don't like to say my friends jealous of me. I think that that is just so weird you know what i'm saying to always walk around thinking everybody jealous of you but what i will say is that you don't really know who's envious until y'all get into an argument i feel like when y'all when, when you get into an argument with a person anger is almost an angry tongue is no different from a drunk tongue they gonna speak the truth rochelle in here hey girl um and then not only that, but I feel like when a man in the middle, if a man is in the middle, that's that's when you really know, like, uh, OK, she won't really she won't really for me. I actually read an article about the three C's in friendships. So you have your constituents, your comrades, and then you have your confidants. Your constituents is going to be everything that you are. They're going to be for what you are for. 
Meaning like, you know what I'm saying? If you're trying to reach a goal, they're going to be for you reaching that goal. But it says that they're temporary because they only are going to be around until you reach that goal. Right. Um, not to say when y'all grow apart that y'all won't still be friends. Like, you know, it wasn't a a, a battle. I mean, a, a, it wasn't a situation where y'all got into it and fell out, but they're going to be for what you are for until you reach that goal. A, um, a comrade is going to be against what you're against. So let's say if you beefing with a girl, your comrade going to be beefing with the girl too. And they're going to be around temporarily as well until the victory is won. But your confidant, they're going to be truly for you. And when I read that, I never thought that you could categorize friendships, right? Because I've heard people talk about how they categorize their friends like, oh, I got this one girl. Like if I want to go out to the club, this is who I call when I want to go out to the club. But if I'm having a barbecue, I invite certain friends to the barbecue because it's only certain people that I would want around my family. When I seen that podcast of that girl speaking that way, I didn't really understand. Wow, y'all are really, thank you so much. Y'all are so sweet. Um. When I saw that podcast of that girl talking about that, I was like, I mean, that doesn't even make sense to categorize your friendships, right? But then I read that article and it made more sense. It made more sense than how she was putting it because how she was basically tried, somebody just tipped a hundred and hundred dollars. Now, what now? Oh my god, that was skin potion. Thank you, Ray. Oh. I just love you. Thank you so much. So yeah, um, as far as like categorizing friends, now I understand it more. Um, and even then you, you still kind of struggle with who goes in which category. So um, I talked about that in the video that I actually filmed, but like I said, I'm doing live now so we can talk about it here. Um, Man, I wish this thing wasn't going so fast so I can see what y'all saying. Like they they gotta they gotta fix this. Cause I put for the chat to go slow and the chat is not going slow. It's pretty freaking fast. Alicia Jeanette said, Oh, okay. Okay, now I can slow it down. I just had to scroll. Okay, we're still learning. We're still learning. Alicia Jeanette says, this is why I tell my kids, learn your friends. This is very important on how you can move, move with what friends. Yeah. So I get that now. I didn't, I, I had never heard of the three C's in a friendship until I read that article. And now I get it, but it did say in the article that it's still going to be hard to differentiate which friend goes in what, because you're going to have those constituents that you might think are confidants. You're going to have those comrades that you're going to think are confidants, but you knowing who's, the person that stays after the victory is won and you've achieved your goals, that's going to be your confidant because the confidant is the friend that is truly for you. Nick, let me see what we're saying before I move to the next. It makes total sense how I'm able. Oh, wait, wait, wait a minute. Don't move too fast now. I'm having a headache pain. You really have PayPal's put here making me dizzy um my friend circle is the size of a pen tip a dot honey mm -hmm. this is definitely how adult friendships tend to be you start seeing things in people and yourself very differently mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i've always virginia and it says i've always been taught everyone's here for a reason and a season true very true very very true and then you know some, a lot of people make friendships off of trauma bonds so if you was to categorize making a friendship off a of trauma bond then that probably sounds like a comrade right it sounds like a comrade because they're going to be against who you're against because y'all bonding off of trauma and if you bonding off somebody off of gossip that's going to be a person that's a comrade as well because y'all bonding off of somebody both of y'all don't like and y'all gossiping about but is that a genuine connection so i said all that to say you never really know who's envious of you until for 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 me in my opinion a man is involved or y'all get into an argument and then I also read another article that says uh, you have to judge your friends off the three six rule, 
which is um, y'all have to have three meaningful conversations over the course of six weeks. I think that that's what it was. There's two different rules. It's the 1136 rule, and then there's a 36 rule. Um, the 1136 rule is y'all have to have 11 different meanings, three hour full, three hour meaningful conversation over the course of six months. And until then, you cannot upgrade an acquaintance to a friend until you've you've done so. Like 11 meetings, 11 different outings together, three hour long conversations over the course of six months. Child, I have never done that. I think I have. <laughs> I'm so quick to call somebody my friend because I honestly, in in my heart, I'm trying to I'm trying to be a genuine friendship. So uh, I'm I'm quick to call somebody my friend, and I have learned that you cannot use their words so loosely. Good night, Cliff Cliff Cello. Hold on, let me see what we're saying. Oh wait. Wow, this is moving so fast. It's messing with my eyes. The best uh, the best advice, uh, Alicia Danielle says, the best advice I've heard from was from Tyler Perry, putting your friends in the category of a tree. Some blow, but them roots are who are who you keep. Okay, yeah, the deep root ones. Damn, Pam, you know real friends, once you need something, they will show you who they are. Mm. Solar Clips says some people are in your life for a month, season, or a sort of period of time, and some are for a lifetime. Yes. Misery Andrea Griffin says misery loves company, but once that drama or trauma is over, so is the friendship. Ooh, what you see. Sure don't know what to say. Okay, the next question um, somebody asked me on Instagram is, what advice do you have about dis distancing yourself from old friendships that have expired? For me, I say just wash your hands and walk away. You don't have to announce your exit. I think announcing your exit will cause more problems than you think it will. You know, I've said this in previous vlogs that um, if something was bothering me, and I went to my friend to express to them how I felt about what was bothering me, I ended up becoming a problem. And then it was a feud afterwards. Like we couldn't come to an understanding like, hey, you really hurt me when you did this. You really hurt me when you said this. Instead, it turns into this back and forth um, argument. And now I'm being threatened and they're saying they're going to expose me on the internet and all this stuff. So for me, I feel like the best thing to do when you want to distance yourself from someone is to just wash your hands with it and walk away. Don't even announce your exit because, I mean, motherfuckers be knowing what they're doing when they do it. So, you know. It's, it's, it's Scorpio said, that's, that's what I do, Peyton. I even do it with family. Hell yeah, me too. Especially with family. Exactly. No announcement necessary. It just goes away. Just like dating the wrong person. Exactly. Peyton, since I lost my head husband, I was like, who will I go places with? Then I discover your channel. And now because of you, I have started solo dinners and dates with myself. Thank you. You're welcome. And doing that, you will meet people. You will make new friends. You might even meet a new man. I've done that several times. Um, definitely vet them, of course, friends and man. But um, going out solo, why it you may think that you're unapproachable, it does make you more approachable. You're way more approachable dating yourself solo and going out solo than you are with a group of friends because a man is not going to approach you if you're with four bad bitches. Because if that they're they're going to be afraid to get rejected in front of your your friends. Hey y'all. And thank y'all so much for joining and anybody that have left super thanks. Thank you so much. Y'all didn't have to do this. So thank you so much for that. I really, I really appreciate that. Spicy Citrus Queen says, I've changed my phone number. I don't talk to my friend of 33 years talking. She moved out of state and didn't tell me. And I had to find out what city on Facebook. Yeah, changing your phone number would definitely help. I love changing my phone number, y'all, but the way things are set up now, I, I have to be very careful with changing my phone number only because when you change your number, you don't know what your number is going to be until it's changed. So 
you know, banks, you know, all your all your different credit cards that your number is linked to. Man, that is such a headache trying to change your number on all those different platforms after your number has been changed and you don't know what your number going to be. So I, I, I realized that it's not as easy to change my number as it was before. I used to try and change my number like draws when I don't want nobody to have access to me no more. I changed my number. I won't, I won't even send people my phone number for probably like a week after it's changed. Um, because I just really want that peace. I just really want to be at peace. No, my phone not going off. I'm not getting any texts. I just, I really want to reset completely right and remove access that a lot of people have on me you know spotless mind i love you too damn pam yep just block instead of changing your phone number see the thing with blocking is they can call star six seven and still call you and then even when a person is blocked, especially on iPhone, I don't know how it is on Android, but if a person is blocked, they can still leave you a voicemail. It's going to be under your blocked voicemails, but they can still leave a voicemail. So the phone call can still get through, essentially, even if a person is still blocked. It'll say unknown caller, but if they want to blow you up all night, they can. And... If they have your email and your email is in the list of emails where a person can reach you FaceTime, they can still FaceTime you. So sometimes it's just better to get a whole new number. Next question says, going through a divorce, I'm a single mom again, trying to get out of the dark space I'm in. Any suggestions? Self-care. Self-care. Like I just said in a recent vlog with the with the whole flight attendant an analogy um you know when you you got to take care of yourself you got to make sure you're good first so if something's going on on the flight right and they drop those masks you got to put your mask on first before you put your kids mask on and that's the same with being a single mom i understand you're going to be going through a lot of pain with divorce trust me i know trust me i know but you got to tap into that self-care, whatever it is that makes you feel good, whether it's reading, meditating, going to a spa, getting a massage, getting your nails done, getting your hair done, putting on makeup, going on solo dinners. Tap into that self-care because this what's really going to help you heal faster. And I love a good old glow up story, child. Cause men really be thinking they gonna have you out here looking looking a mess and feeling a mess and out here you know stuck like Chuck and then you turn around and glow up better than you was when you was with them you know you got more money better house you looking better skin glowing you know next thing you know they spinning the block. The next question was, um, can you give any wisdom tips for first time moms? So for first time moms, I said this in the video that I recorded, but I'm, I'm not going to post it because I'm, I'm, I'm live. But um, that book, What to Expect When Expecting, leaves a lot of shit out. <laughs> that book leaves a lot of shit out. They need to um, update that book. I'm, I don't know. The last time I read it was when I was pregnant with Kyron because I was scared shitless. And I was like, okay, this it, it got to be a book because I'm such a nerd. I, I read about everything. So I'm like, it got to be a book on how to do this because I really didn't know. And I didn't feel like anybody could really teach me uh, what was going to happen and what to expect. So I got that book, What to Expect with Expect When Expecting. And it leaves a lot of shit out. I will say breastfeed if you can for as long as you can because breast milk is the best milk for your child's development. Um be very particular about the daycare that you choose, because, of course, if you're working, you're going to need somebody to watch your child. Be very particular about the daycare that you choose. Make sure you vet the daycare really, really well. Vet the people at the daycare. I'm seeing on the news all the time something is happening to kids at daycares. I understand that sometimes you can only afford uh, a, a, a certain kind of daycare. Trust me, I understand. I went through the same thing. Karen, I switched Karen daycare so many times when she was little because if I felt I was unhappy with the, the care of the daycare, 
babe. I'm taking my baby up out that daycare really quick. Like I'm not having no no situations. And it was one particular daycare. Cameron got a staph infection. Oh, that messed me up so bad because I'm like, how the fuck would you get a staph infection from a daycare? So be very particular about the daycares that you put her in. If you decide to get a nanny or a babysitter, babysitter vet them as well because people are crazy. Um, trust no one, not even the other parent, because even then they might have someone keeping a child that they don't really know. And people are evil. It's a lot of people that really don't like kids. They can pretend like they like kids, but they really don't like kids. And they, they get jobs to do mean things and, you know, bad things to kids. So trust no one, trust absolutely no one. Uh, the next question said tips for, hold on. We're going to, we're going to chat over here for a minute. Let me answer some. Don't forget to hit that like button. Oh yeah. Hit the like button y'all. Yep. One time I walked in and the teacher's husband was there with the kids, huge red flags, took my kid out that day. The teacher's husband. Sis, we need a meet and greet here in Atlanta for you, ma'am. Your soul seems so genuine and your supporters would love to meet you. I'm going to set that up soon. I'm going to set that up soon. I read the same book I had my daughter when I was almost 33. I breastfed her for a whole year. She's 25 with a four-month-old and I'm 58. Don't always trust family. Run daycares. Also, sin from experience of mother-in-law allowing family friends to hang out and smoke cigarettes and Black skin, lie when I can smell my children's car seats, yeah. Sounds like my childhood friend mother. She ran a daycare out of her house and was so mean to those kids. But when the parents came to pick them up, was a different person. Scary world, yep. I've seen that. I've totally seen that. Mm-hmm. Kids be snot nose the whole day. So much snot that it done turn crusty and all of it. They eating Vienna sausages for lunch and crackers. I'm like, what is this? My grandson fell through a glass window at daycare three staples after that I started watching my own, even work nights so I can keep them during the day. You are so wise and beautiful and the best mom ever. I look forward to your content and look forward to seeing. Thank you so much. Um, Peyton, you ever do a Los Angeles for a meet and greet? Um, Yeah, I would. Yeah, I would totally do a meet and greet in Los, Ange Los Angeles. Ross John of Roses said, I just donated that book to a local bookstore. Okay, going on to the next question. Tips for battling loneliness while living alone. So if you live alone, I think you're just going to, you know, automatically feel lonely while you might not actually be lonely. You might feel lonely because at certain times, you may want company, right? Whether it's, you know, intimate company or just having a friend over. I think when you when you have those times, what's most important is that you get out of the house instead of allowing yourself to um, be a homebody. Like I know a lot of people claim that they are homebodies and there ain't nothing wrong with it. Ain't nothing wrong with being a homebody because it's crazy once you go outside and outside is very expensive. But you need to get out and socialize because I think for people that have social anxiety, it helps you deal with so social anxiety. So like um, you don't necessarily have to go to a bar or, you know, a party or a club. You can go to poetry night. You can go do um, pottery or paint and silk. You can be in more social environments that aren't just the club. Because honestly, like a club really ain't that social. People go to the club to show off their outfit and stand around in their phone acting like they're not there. Like nobody's, it's, it's not like the eighties anymore. Like I feel like with the exception of crack, because that 
destroyed people, I feel like the 80s was a really fun time to be in because people actually went to the club and danced. You know, now clubs kind of whack. Payton, you make me a hypocrite laugh out loud. I be like, how and why do people be so vested in the lives of others? Then I found you and I literally get joy when I see you post. Keep up the amazing work. Thank you. Payton, your blogs really helped pull me out of depression. Lupus has taken me over and I had just given in until I started watching you. Oh, I'm so sorry. I have a friend girl that uh, battles with lupus. DM me. D Nikki Nikki DM me so I can send you her page because her story is so inspirational. Like, oh my God. And she is so bad. When I tell y'all she's so bad, um, without, you know, telling all of her business, she, she, she's going through lupus as well. But when you look at her, you wouldn't even see it. Now there was a point when I think the, um, the illness kind of tried to take over, but the way she pushed through in mind, she looks so good. Like I even reached out to her and I was like, girl, I need to work out with you. Her body looks so freaking good, y'all. Like, ma'am, it's bad, bad. But um, Nikki Nikki DM me so I can uh, send you her page so you can, you know, talk to her because she's so sweet, very approachable. I mean, the first time I met her, I actually met her in a club. This is so crazy. The funniest story. I had been, I think this was like 2018. I was in Dallas and we were out in a club. It was a club. I ain't gonna lie. It was a club. We were out in a club at Quill. Baby, Quill used to be so popping and it was a day party. And I seen her standing across the room and I was like, damn, she bad. Let me go over there and tell her that she bad. And I walked over. I was like, girl, I just wanted to come over here and tell you you are bad. Like, you you look good. You did that. Her whole outfit, everything was just, it was just top notch, top tier. And we got close after that, and we've been cool ever since. And she ended up telling me that night that she had lupus, and, and she was going. And now, at that time, the illness really hadn't taken over. And, like, you know what I'm saying, take, tried to take her down through there. But, it, you know, as we were, you know, cool over the years I saw because she's very uh, open with her story, how it took all of her teeth. And, you know, she had to have a, um, uh, like a bag, you know, you know how when people have those bags connected to their stomach, she had to have that, but baby, but God, but God, she looks so good. Now y'all she's getting her teeth done. She's, she has her own business, her own clothing line. She be having some bad ass pieces too. She, she cold blooded. So, Definitely uh, DM me so I can get you connected with her because uh, I think that you would you would really like enjoy hearing her story. She's going to be doing YouTube soon. I've definitely tried to, you know, push her into to doing YouTube because I feel like her story would touch a lot of people. Oh, thank you, Queen Monique. Thank you so much. How you to grow your business, YouTube tips and tricks. Uh, I'm going to definitely do a YouTube tip video um, because uh, I got a lot of YouTube questions tonight for the video. So I'm definitely going to. Um, did I miss making the new friends question? Um, no. How do you find genuine friends? So I, I hadn't answered it yet. So um, finding gen genuine friends, I think. Oh, I guess I did answer that because I was talking about the three, six rule. So, you know, basically the three, six rule I just repeated um, is that you need to have three mean, meaningful conversations, um, not about trauma, not about gossip, but three meaningful conversations over the course of six weeks before you can upgrade a person from an, an acquaintance to a friend. Um, I've never done that before, but I, I, I can definitely see how that would um, weed out the people that are genuinely for you and the people that are around for a season or a reason. Thank you, Just Pinky. Oh, wow, we're getting a commercial. Are y'all seeing a commercial?
Okay, the next question was talking and actually hearing God's response. Only if you're comfortable, love you much. So for me, I'm not going to pretend like I talk to God um, every day and I pray every day. I'm not going to act like I'm no saint and I pray every day. It's something that I that I do need to do. I do. I would say I talk to God every day, but I won't. I don't get on my knees and pray every day. But when I'm in, when I feel like it's been a while since I have prayed, I light a candle and talk to God. Or when I feel like I'm being attacked in some way, like somebody trying to form a weapon against me, that's when I talk to God and ask for protection and things like that. But um, how do I hear his message? I think for the different outlets that I choose to engage in, like social media and movies and stuff like that, um, that's how I hear his message. message. And I hope um, this doesn't sound crazy, but I mean, the way I've calibrated my Instagram, I want it to be more positive than negative. Now, don't get me wrong. I still follow baller alert in freaking the shade room. That's it, though. That's it. That's the only that's the only toxic shit I I mean, but if I didn't follow the shade room, I wouldn't have known Tina Turner had passed. That's how I found out Tina Turner had passed because I logged on and the shade room had posted it. So sometimes shade room a little necessary. But for the most part, my page is like because of the, the stuff that I engage in, like those uh reels where it says um God wants to talk to you and uh, quote, it, it'll it'll read a prayer and it'll, it'll, it'll say, come in, amen, amen. And every time I see one of those, I always come in, amen. So it's kind of like shaped the algorithm for me and, and what's posted on, what's what I see on my timeline will be nothing but positive stuff, positive quotes, positive uh, reels, uh, prayer reels and stuff like that. So I'll hear God's message from that. I hope that doesn't sound weird, but I will. Like anything that's plaguing my thoughts, when I get on Instagram, I'll see a message from him that'll be like, oh, okay, that's what I needed to see. Like I might be talking to a dude and he might make me feel inadequate or I might just, I don't know, something about him just don't seem right. You know what I'm saying? So I pray the removal prayer and then I get on Instagram maybe days later and it'll confirm how I was feeling and what I was feeling and stuff like this. So YouTube too, definitely YouTube. Sometimes I feel like our phone be listening to us because the way things will pop up on my YouTube, like it's crazy. I didn't even, the, the reason why I decided to start treading on, I think me and Aaliyah, we was in Thailand and Aaliyah said something about treading on. And I bullshit you fucking not. The next week I'm on YouTube scrolling and it wasn't nothing but treading on videos up so i'm like okay let me watch these girls journey because i'm 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 saying treading on don't work for me my skin do not like treading on i'm watching these girls journey and everybody's saying treading on messes up your skin for the first couple of months but you gotta stick with it and stay consistent and then you will get to a point where you have like beautiful glass skin and I never do that. I never do that. As soon as I, the, I'm telling you, as soon as I get one bump after using treading on, I throw that shit away. So I've been staying consistent, even though look, I don't know if y'all can see that, but it's a big one. This one like three pimples in one. This is this is this is a combo. But that's the last one I got. And when that one gone, I ain't gonna have no more pimples. But I think I'm gonna break out again. I don't know. That doesn't sound crazy. God looks at the heart more than listening to what comes out of your mouth. I know this right, Shirley. Hey, Shirley. Y'all, I love me some Miss Shirley Hunt. She always leaves the nicest. Oh, my God, girl. I'm so glad you're in this live. You always leave the nicest comment. Every time you give me goosebumps because you are just so pure hearted. And I hope you receive all the blessings that your heart can ever desire. All the abundance because... You are just so positive, and I love that about you. I truly, truly love that about you. I see a lot of familiar names in here, y'all. When I talk to y'all all the time and I read y'all comments all the time, it's like a mental note. I be knowing who I'm talking to. Like, I know who. I know who the girls are. Memories with Marie. Oh, I like that name. Do you have a YouTube page? Go to channel. 
Hold on, y'all. I'm finna go to her channel. Memories with Marie. She do. Y'all gotta go tap into Memories with Marie. She got a YouTube channel. I like that. I like that name. Peyton, thank you for showing people that Chicago has some goodness there. We appreciate you. You welcome. I ain't gonna be back no time soon, though. But you welcome, girl. Ooh. 18 years. 18 years. I love y'all too. Best editing software for Microsoft, Adobe. Adobe, Adobe Pro, Adobe. What? Oh, wait. Premiere, Premiere Pro, Premiere Pro. And with Premiere Pro, man, I need to cancel my subscription. You can subscribe instead of paying for it and buying it in total, which I probably have done now because it's been to the $25 been being taken out of my account since 2020. I need to do something about that. Um, yeah, you can subscribe instead of just like buying the software and downloading on your uh, your computer. You can subscribe and they take it out of your account every month for like $24.99. And, but I ain't gonna lie to you. I have heard that Premiere is hard. It is not the same as Final Cut Pro. And I think that's why, like, I said that I was going to use it. That's why I call myself, like, signing up for the subscription where I can edit with Premiere because that's what a lot of cinematography c cinematographers use. And that's how they edit a lot of movies in Premiere Pro. Um, and I really wanted to, you know, upgrade my vlogs. But Premiere Pro hard. It is hard. Peyton, I love the fact that you actually read and respond to your YouTube comments. Thank you for your time and content. Thank you, Tionda. What camera do I use? I use a uh, Sony ZV-10. Hold on. I just seen Rochelle was in here. Where my girl at? There she go. Rochelle, Rochelle says, oh, I love. Oh, you can click on people. Hold on. Oh, my Lord, you can remove people, report, put them in time out, hide them, and add as a moderator. Now, y'all go on for the pen, Rochelle. Now, y'all go and um, subscribe to Rochelle. Show my girl some love. Go watch her. Go binge watch her most recent vlog. She funny as hell. Sonya Moore says, I pray everyone commenting is subscribed or subscribing so her algorithm can run up her subscribers to the moon. I think the way I set this live up is that you have to be subscribed in order to see it and comment. So probably so. Hold on, this is moving so fast, Lord. Hi, Peyton. I honestly didn't know your daughter was 18. I seriously thought she was about 14 or 15. Yeah, Karen got that reverse Benjamin button. She looked 11. Karen looks very much 11. But I looked uh I looked super young when I was Okay, the next question. Would you go on a blind date? Listen. I feel like Instagram is enough blind date. Instagram is as blind as I'm going to get. Because y'all know men can cap on that app. Y'all know that, right? Men can do some capping on that app. And I actually, in my honest opinion, I feel like I have already went on a blind date, right? Because I, I have dated blindly. I have been blind, baby. For my eyes, I could not see. I went, I went off of Instagram and okay. So I saw this guy. I met this guy. How do I say this? Instagram is about as close as I'm going to get to a blind date. I met this guy. His Instagram made it seem like he had his life put all the way together. Baby, you couldn't tell me shit. The nigga, the, the nigga was in different cars. He was posing in front of different cars. He was always very dapper and well dressed, honey. Um, and when he got with me, he was, oh, it wasn't none of that. It wasn't none of that. 
So that's 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 about as blind as I'ma get. Now nah, I ain't going on no blind date. I ain't going on no blind date. Can't nobody, can't nobody fix me up with nobody. I got this one home girl. She live in Atlanta. We have never met, but we have been friends literally over 10 years. We have never met in, met in person. Ain't that crazy? We have never met in person, but we have been friends since like 2009. She stay trying to hook me up with people. I said, baby, listen, listen, let us, let, let us thou meet each other first. So you can understand who I am in person. Because you you not gonna figure me out. You not, ain't she she stay sending me dudes that she trying to hook me up with. No ma'am. White dudes, Arab dudes, Mexican dudes. She want me to date out my race so bad. And nobody that she's sending me. I girl, you can't hook me up. You 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 cannot hook me up. I I have to like him. Cause I'm at a stage now in my life, it's not just about looks. I need to know what you like on the inside because a lot of people fucked up somebody said please save this life i might i don't know i'm a little nervous i'm a little nervous because i be doing lives all the time on instagram and i never save my lives i'm a little nervous i might i don't know i don't know but the question would i go on a blind date no i would not go on a blind date Somebody asked, do you ever think about a hair transplant to minimize your forehead? No shade. I have one, too. Baby, when I tell you, when I read this, I hollered the way I hollered. So I have considered a forehead reduction. I have. I have considered a forehead reduction. And basically what a forehead reduction is, is they cut off some of your um forehead or whatever the skin and then they pull your hairline down so i have thought about that but as long <laughs> but as long as they making frontals and closures baby i'm gonna be there okay i am going to be there that's what I, that's what it's gonna be Ma'am gonna get her silk, silk presses and put a wig right back on it. She is. She's gonna slap on that silk press. I mean, she's gonna slap on that frontal. But no, I would never get a hair transplant because, like, how you gonna transplant her to my forehead that wasn't even right there? It ain't even no, supposed to be no hair right there. And it's just gonna be like, you know what I'm saying? It's just gonna be like a whole bunch of them little them little dots on my forehead until hair grow right there. And then, ain't that what Tory Lanez did? It looks really weird. Ain't that what Tory Lanez did? I don't know about that. They do do it a lot in Turkey, though. The men's? Mm-hmm. Let's see what y'all over here talking about. Mm-hmm. One cat started following me and all of a sudden his pic changed. Come to find out he been posting his brother's pictures. Was his brother cute? Y'all know that's that's actually how my mama that's that's how my mom and my daddy had me. Y'all wanna hear that story? Okay, so my mama <clears throat> my daddy had actually, because my mama got a twin, but they fraternal twins, though. So my Auntie Joyce is my mama's fraternal twin. So actually, Auntie Joyce was talking to my daddy first. They had met, and my daddy liked Auntie Joyce. So one day he called the house, and he was like, can I speak to Joyce? And my mama pretended like she was my auntie. So my daddy ended up started liking my mama, and then they started messing with each other and had me. That's how I'm here today. Yep. I know it's so wrong, right? <laughs> it's wrong. It's very wrong. Y'all ain't got to tell Auntie Joyce that I told y'all did, okay? But I think that's where a lot of the sister feud started, if you ask me. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Jamie. 
Damn, she snatched her sister, man. Hold on. It, where it go? Ooh, this moving so fast. Jesus. Ken Yada said that went left real quick. Yeah, it did. When well, my mom, who told me that story? I think my Auntie Joyce told me that story. Yeah, my mom, I don't think my mom ever told me that story. I think it was my Auntie Joyce. Hey Peyton, how did we, how did you get comfortable vlogging with your camera in public? I have the Sony ZV-1F and still been nervous about using it out, sending love from Chicago. So vlogging is a thing, right? It's, I mean, it's, I feel like it's, it's so common now that if you are holding yourself back from vlogging, it's because you're in your head. Like people even if you're not holding an actual actual camera, you know what I'm saying, and walking, people are vlogging, holding they, you know, their phones. So it's just all about really just being comfortable with yourself and not allowing how others view you to affect you getting this coin, okay? Because it's coin to be gotten on YouTube now. It's coin to be gotten. I ain't finna be. I, I'm not on here to tell how much a person can make, but you can Google what some YouTubers make, and it's some coin to be gotten. I don't let nobody get in the way of my coin. Hell, I, what they gonna do? What they gonna do? Come up and snatch my camera from me? Not. Auntie Joyce is Terry from Soul Food Chai, and oh, and your mom is Maxine, baby. I wasn't ready. Oh, we I never thought of it like this. She surely is. My mama surely is Maxine. Child. I don't know how to slow down the comments. How do you slow down the comments? I promise you I don't know how to slow down the comments. Let's see. Hold on. I'm, I'm in the settings. customization how long you want participants to wait between sending messages redirect trailer yeah i don't know how to slow down the comments sis I love your aunties with Auntie Joy. She keeps it 100. Joy is so damn funny, y'all. Y'all want to see the half of it. A lot of times she be telling me to cut the camera off. Because <laughs> she know I, I, I will record our phone calls for training purposes. The next question is, how do I heal from an abusive relationship? I feel like you just got to take your time. When you're in a, an abusive relationship, there is no timeline on how long it takes to heal. There's no deadline on when you're supposed to be healed. Shit, man, I divorced Karen Daddy in 2012. When Karen come home, on like the fifth, that probably was the day I felt like, okay, now I can start my healing journey. Because even then, when I was divorced from him, I wasn't healed. Mm -mm. I put a lot of in, I put I poured a lot into my cup, you know, trying to. Um, to slow down the comments in it's in settings message delay. Look at Cindy helping me. I love her. Message delay. Hold on, message will like slow mo. See, I put it on there. Okay, let's change it to. I'm gonna change it to 200, 200 seconds, and see what they do. It's three thousand three hundred and thirty-three people in here. Well, it was now it's three thousand three hundred and fifty-one, but that was a good number. Thank you, Sandy. Send a message every three minutes, 20 seconds. Slow mode is on. Oh, okay. 
Okay, now I put it on. Send a message every three minutes and 20 seconds. Okay, there we go. Much, much better. Y'all go and, go and follow beautiful Cindy. If y'all not following beautiful Cindy, go follow beautiful Cindy. She makes such, I, I love her vlogs. I really, really love her vlogs. She puts a lot into editing her vlogs. She does a lot of cooking recipes. I love the way she dresses. She gives me, um, she gives me soccer mom. I love her. Like I could just tell, like she she's gonna be like the best mom. She the how she dressed. She's so young, but she's very like elegant and very poised. Um, I remember when like I started following her, and I was like, oh, she's so I just love her. But I was kind of intimidated to reach out to her and like you know what I'm saying. Try to be like. YouTube friends because sometimes I feel like my personality is too much because but and I smoke so I don't always feel like my personality will like mesh with other girls that don't indulge in the things that I indulge in um and I think that goes to like saying like how people make new friends you really got to get out of your head because when you think of let me see a good girlfriend group that I've always wanted. I would say like Sex in the City. I would definitely say Sex in the City. Sex in the City is definitely a good girlfriend group that I like. Um, all of them were different. All of them were different. Nobody was like Samantha. Nobody was like Carrie because while Carrie was like best dressed and super sexy and you know what I'm saying? She's a sex uh, enthusiast and stuff like this. She did not have her shit together. She did not have us. Carrie would, Carrie would max out that credit card in a minute for a Dolce & Gabbana dress, knowing she had to pay her bills. They were all different. So I, I definitely feel like um, making new friends, you got to get out of your head because while you may feel like, oh, okay, I don't know, I, I might not be her, her, her steez. You are. You are. Peyton, this is Netta. Change my YouTube name. Thanks to Rochelle advice, but love that you interact with us. You're so sweet. Francis Marie. Oh, hey, girl. You getting ready to start YouTube? Let me go to your channel. I love this. You can just go to people's channel. Francis, you are pretty, girl. I just subscribed. How come I'm all in the camera? My bad. Oh, thank you, Cindy. Please hit the like button, PayPal's peace and blessings. That's what Joy Allen said. Thank y'all. I'm starting YouTube too. I'm scared of the camera though. Don't be scared of the camera. That's how I was in 2017. I actually have the first video that I ever made. I still have it on my Instagram. Mm-hmm. And I never posted it. I think it's a beautiful thing to have friends that are different. Yes, it is. But sometimes you 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 talk yourself out of making new friends because of intimidation, right? When I see a girl that's very classy and elegant, not saying that I'm not, but there are things that I do that I understand a lot of other other girls don't do, um, particularly like the way I curse, the way I talk, I smoke, you know what I'm saying? So I'll, I'll say, well, you know, I don't think she would like want to hang out with me or, or, but I'm actually really different in person. Like I'm me in person, but I'm quiet too. And I think that's why a lot of people probably felt like, cause I, I've, I've seen comments that um, insinuated me and Aaliyah weren't like meshing based on what you saw in the video but y'all gotta understand this was our first time meeting and i didn't want to have a camera in her face the whole time and she didn't want to have a camera in my face the whole time because we both really really you know wanted to meet each other and hang out but it, we we were so focused on building genuine connections off camera and a lot of things that we talk about was just not for youtube you know what i'm saying we we talking about everything it just wasn't for youtube so um uh, it could have seen it could have seemed based on what we decided to post that we weren't meshing and it wasn't like um like we didn't have anything in common but we actually did it was just off camera and and we not fit to hurry oh hold on girl let me let me now keep talking 
You know what I'm saying? That's weird. You don't do that when you're building genuine friendships because the friendship wasn't about YouTube. The friendship was about, you. hey, we've been cool it was for five years. You know what I'm saying? It's time to meet in person and, and hang out. My problem is I'm not scared of the camera. I'm scared of the people on the internet. Oh, yeah, definitely. I feel you on that. I feel you on that. Hey, I thought this thing was supposed to slow down. It's still going fast. I love how you keep it real in your vlogs, though. Never forced. Thank you. Thank you so much. Peyton, I just found your channel and can't stop watching. Um, I, too, started a YouTube this year, and it's a heavy lift. Listen, once you get it going, though, get it going. And I'm going to say this. For the girls that are watching, the girls that are in the live tonight, if you can, man, next month, because because June has, has proven to be really, really great for da daily vlogging. Next month, try to daily vlog. Try to vlog daily. They don't have to be that long, like 15, 20 minutes. But if you're talking about j jumping in the algorithm, baby, that's the way to go. Because, you know, vloggers always say consistency is key. Like in everybody that gives YouTube tips, they always say consistent, be consistent, be consistent. Man, daily vlogs is the way to go because... I had no idea that my vlogs was going to like take off like this. And it's, it's, it's really, really been, it's really been a, a, a good month. It's been a good month. It's better than Vlogmas, better than Vlogmas and better than Mayhem last year, June showing out. So if you can vlog daily next month, cause I'm pretty sure June won't be, July won't be different from June as, as far as like the um, CPM rates and stuff like that. Man, vlog every day. Try vlogging every day in July. Miss Payton, have you tried AI yet? What kind of AI? Hey, Payton, how do you get so comfortable going outside maskless since COVID? I still get anxiety and it holds me back from going out like I really want to. I mean, I was comfortable during COVID. Soon as they said, we ain't got to put mask on, baby. I never put another fucking mask on again. Couldn't stand it. My skin was terrible during that, during that time. Oh, I was like, damn, is it my breath that's causing this acne? Like, is it my breath? Like, what's tea? I was changing my mask. I was washing my mask. Had the little, the little spray to spray on the mask. Like, what's going on? Like, what? Maybe I hope that never happens again, because listen, and what's so crazy is before COVID even happened, when I would be on a plane and people would be on a plane coughing, oh, you talking about, oh, that would make me so mad. I'm like, now, if you know you sick, why you ain't got on a mask? Like, why you get on a plane coughing and stuff? You ain't got a mask on. That would make me so mad. This was way before COVID. What, uh, you know what I'm saying? COVID had, hadn't even happened yet. And I'd be like, they need to come out with something where people have to wear a mask on the plane. I probably manifested that shit. Because I sure said it. I said, I said, they need to come out with something where people have people have to wear a mask on the plane. Baby, I envisioned it. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, God gave me powers. The next question says, dating when you have a little coin yourself. Men seem to be opportunistic or intimidated. So I say, when you got money, see, when you got some coins, please don't leave with your money. I know, I know you I know you want to be shitting on niggas. I know you want to get outside, jump, jump out the gym, you know what I'm saying? Let niggas know, hey, I'm a big fish. But please don't. Please don't. Because men are literally the new bad bitches. Sis. You'll get finessed. Oh, you'll get finessed so fast. It's like it's like a finesse light bulb turns on, and they just they just know everything to say. They know how to touch on you, rub on you. They gonna come over and just nail you to the cross, baby. They gonna screw you real good, baby. <laughs> Let me close the door. Cause camera don't need to hear this. 
oh y'all like my juicy couture pajamas i got them from marshall's for 16.99 me and karen dressed alike right now but yeah girl don't leave with money please don't leave with money they're gonna try to nail you to the cross baby there ain't nothing like if you if you ever want to be because i want this to be pg-13 if you ever want to be treated like a princess like a queen Get you a broke nigga. <laughs> they ain't got nothing but time. They know how to be real consistent. They gonna hey beautiful you every morning. They gonna what you doing you to death. They gonna good morning beautiful you. Don't leave with money. You ain't gotta let them know you got no coin. They can see it. They come over your house. They see how it, you ain't sleeping on a, a mattress. They ain't gonna know how to act. Don't let you have a fully furnished house. Oh, baby, they ain't gonna know how to act. They ain't gonna want to spend a the night. They ain't gonna want to leave. They gonna ask what's for what's for breakfast in the morning. What's for breakfast? Shit, I ain't even got no. I ain't even got no bacon and eggs in the refrigerator. Actually, I ain't got nothing but a little Hello Fresh, sir. Sir, <laughs> you 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 gonna have to go to um. What's the breakfast spot? You gonna have to go to IHOP. <laughs> you gonna you gonna have to IHOP your motherfucking ass on up out of here, cause uh uh, yeah, don't leave with money, sis. Don't tell them you got no coin. And if they intimidated hell, I mean, you knew what you was doing when you slid in my DM. You knew I wasn't no little fish when you slid in my DM. I ain't got nothing to do with you being intimidated. Shit, you need to get your pockets together. Get your pockets together, sis. I mean, a uh, bro. Um, could you date a blue collared man making seventy thousand per year? That's the next question. Could I date a blue collar man making seventy thousand dollars per year? <sighs> I could. Yeah, I could. Is he gonna date me though? Is the question. Cause one thing about it, I'm not, I'm not gonna sit up here and be dating you, and all you got, you, and you just want to come over here and Netflix and chill. And we talking about coin and how much you make a year. Let's consider that. Okay, I understand you can't take me on no two, three hundred dollar dates every month. But are you going to date me? Cause you're not, you're not gonna come over my house once a you know every weekend and we netflix and chilling the whole time now i can't date you but will i can i be in a relationship with some with, with somebody that makes seventy thousand dollars a year i don't know i don't know because i will be i would be the breadwinner in the relationship and it's things that i like to do that you know cost the coin and i feel like in the relationship i would have to pay for those things and i think that eventually i would if the relationship didn't go well and it ended, I probably would end up feeling used at the end of it because I paid the most in a relationship. You know what I'm saying? It don't always have to be like that, but I've been in a relationship before where I was the breadwinner. And at the end of it, I felt used, even though he swore up and down, he, he didn't use me. He never treated me like he treated other women, but I mean, he was a finesser. So I don't think a nigga would just be, um, truthful about who they finessed and who they didn't finesse any damn way. Doses of Tony Payton spend 70000 in Zara alone. I don't. No, I don't. I don't even. Mm -mm, no, I don't. I don't. Mm -mm. Dang, does having coin make it harder to date? journey with tiffany uh you know what i think it does i think it does it makes it harder to date for for the person with the coin like but okay so for men when men got coin that makes them more desirable right because they know they can pay for it but women with coin i ain't gonna pay for it and I'm talking about not paying for the bill or the date. I'm talking about paying for the person. See, men with coin, they don't mind paying for the person because if they want something, they feel like, okay, if I got some money, I can get her. 
Yeah, I ain't buying no nigga. I'm not. I ain't not. I ain't buying no man. No, 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 no. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. No, I'm against that. If there's something that you like, it's no shade to you, though. But I'm against that. I can't do it. I can't do it. Because men, men will get real expensive if you cool with buying them. They'll get real expensive. Lena Nicole says, sounds like Aretha in respect. Exactly. I was singing that song the other day. I'm like, hold on now, Aretha. I think having a father figure in your life makes it harder today because that, hold on. That, now, as soon as I start reading, that's when the 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 chat fly up fast. Hold on. I think maybe if I click on it, it won't go nowhere. Hey, okay. I think having a father figure in your life makes it harder today because that woman usually will connect with a man that was like that father figure in her life. Yeah. Raven Elise said when she made her first million, it made dating harder. It's all, I think for a woman, it's always going to be a little harder when you make a lot of money because as your finances grow, so do your standards. So the thing, there are a lot of things that you just won't settle for and allow because you feel like, okay, I have the lifestyle I want. I have the fi I have the financial stability I want. There is really nothing that I need from a man in that aspect where a lot of women would, you know, allow certain things specifically because uh, because the man is uh, providing a lifestyle for her, whether he's paying her rent or paying her bills or paying her car note and stuff like that. When you're doing it all for yourself. It, it does make your standards a little higher in things in, in things that you won't allow yourself to deal with. Like where I am now. Oh, speaking of, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Girl, why my ex slid in my emails? Not my DMs. He didn't text. I'm trying to figure out how the hell he got that email address. Slid in my emails, bitch. This is the most toxic ex that I've ever had in my life. This is the Aquarius. Slid in my emails talking about if I had if I'm free, can we meet today? <sighs> okay. So this the one when I'm on live on Instagram, I always say, should I talk about him? No, I'm healed. I'm not going to talk about him. I'm not even going to. That's the one. That's that one. That's that one. If y'all remember that vlog, that I had a vlog. I think it was during Mayhem. And I was like, yeah, I got some company. And he was like, company like a motherfucker. Him. Him. So, oh, I need to stop frowning my face up like this. Child, that man, when I tell y'all, I feel like I have literally told him that he has caused me more pain than my child's father. And he swore up and down he's not that bad. No, he's very much that bad. And whereas in the past, before I am where I am, to, before I was here, if he would spin the block, I would literally feel like, okay, maybe he has changed, right? Because somebody asked me a question. Who asked me about that? Somebody asked me that. I think that was one of the questions. Would I allow somebody to spin the block? Yes, thoughts on spinning the block when everything was cool, just bad timing as far as mentally, et cetera. He would spin the block so much. I ain't even know what spinning the block was until I started dating that man because I ain't never ghosted somebody or talked to somebody and allowed them back in after I washed my hands with it, right? So I I, I want to say I learned about spinning the block. That that became a, a, a known thing for me in 2018. And at first I felt like it was a... 
I don't know. I, I felt flattered about it, right? Like, damn, I must got the juice. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Bitch, you can't leave me alone, ho. No. No. Sometimes that be God trying to see if you still stupid. Mm-hmm. Well, I ain't stupid no more. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I'm at a place in my life. Ain't no way I'm going back there. No, ma'am. No, ma'am, no tea. What y'all over here talking about? Darling Nikki, woo child, I'm a Pisces too. And my most toxic ex was also an Aquarius. You know they say you're not supposed to date your sister signs. So if you a March Pisces, you're not supposed to date Aquarius or Aries. Now, see, I already knew about Aries because my little brother are Aries. And, oh, you ever grow up with a little brother that's three years younger than you? Talking about button heads. I used to whoop my little brother with a hanger when he didn't want to listen. I would never date an Aries. Y'all ain't got to tell nobody that I whoop my little brother with a hanger. He, it, it was just a little tap, little tap. You know what I'm saying? Little love tap, that's all, because he didn't want to listen. I had to keep. I had to let him know that he was my little brother and he needs to listen to me because I'm trying to teach him Tell him something for his own good. And to this day, that man still would not listen to me. Oh, we butt heads so much. Ain't no way in the world I ever date an Aries. They so argumentative. Got to have the last word. Don't want to listen. Know it all. I know everything there is about Aries. I never date one. Mm -mm. My dude is Aries. He make my life so easy. What's your sign, sis? It's okay if we don't have a lot of likes in this live. If I if I save it, then you know it'll it'll get likes and people will watch it. Oh my God, we have been on live for an hour and twelve minutes. Chai. Karen, what you doing? Oh. I'm an Aquarius, and one reason we bump heads with Pisces is because both are known to be the most psychic and intuitive of all the signs. I get that. B-Rose exclusive. What keeps you going as a vlogger? Well, I like documenting my life because I have a bad memory. So I feel like it's going to help me. I always have something to go back and look at, look back at and laugh and remember the good times because I honestly remember more trauma than I do good times or like good days. I remember bad days like she happened just yesterday, but I forget about a lot of the good times. So I want to be able to look back on this documentary of my life and remember the good times. Mercedes famous, thank you. Karen adjusting to Dallas. <laughs> oh, God, I just got a pain in my thigh. Yeah, she adjusting real good. Well, it maybe it's different for the Aries girls, but I'm scared of scared to date the Aries man. I'm also scared to date a Pisces man. But if I'm scared to date damn near everybody, okay, uh, I don't want to mess with the Air, uh, another Aquarius. I damn sure ain't messing with another Pisces. And then you know we could we <laughs> we have a little fun. We have a little fun, but a relationship, no thanks. Um, Aries, no. Taurus supposed to be the most compatible. I mean, they're supposed to be like. Soulmate, no, Gemini. So y'all know Karen and Gemini. I I think Gemini's and Pisces are so much alike, and um, I like Gemini's. I do. I like Gemini's. I feel like Gemini's allow my femininity to flourish. 
You know what I'm saying? I just I just want to be soft. I just want to be a girl. You know what I'm saying? They allow me to like really embrace my femininity and be soft. I like Gemini's. Um, who come after Gemini's? Cancers. I don't attract cancers. I don't attract cancers. Leo's, that's temporary. I mean, what can a lion do with a fish? Eat it. Virgos. Huh. I like Virgos. Virgos are very enlightening. They can teach you some. They be oh, Virgos, charming, baby. Virgos are charming as fuck. They know how to they know how to treat a woman. They know how to make a woman feel good. <laughs> It was this one. Oh, y'all making me think. It was this one Virgo that I had that I that I used to talk to. He was killed recently. He was a basketball player. Y'all, I loved to meet some him. Oh, I loved to meet some him, baby. Lord. Mm. I shot my shot at him too. When I seen him, I said, Who the fuck is that? I didn't even know who he was, bitch. I seen him from across the room. I was like, oh, he tall. Hey, sister girl. Hey, mom. Hey. Um, I know I'm interrupting you, but do you want to help me uh, pop, pop, pop this? Yeah, you're not interrupting me. You're so cute and sweet. Thank you, mom. You're welcome. Let's see. Let's make sure we don't burn it. Okay, with this microwave, that microwave pops stuff a little fast. Put it on two three zero. Put it on two three zero. Mm-hmm. Let me Yeah, all over here talking fast. Thank you, Peyton, for the live chat. I'm a Leo and my soulmate is a Virgo. I'm a Leo. My longest friends are Pisces and Libra, but I don't date them ever. My ex-husband, a Pisces, never again. And if me and this Aquarius don't get it together, never again. Yeah, I don't be liking Karen to see me like you know, like boys too long or I mean too much because you know I don't want her to that to be her thing you know what I'm saying like Karen boys got cooties I don't care how old you get whether you're 18, 28, or 38, 40, 50 boys got cooties cooties are the mind cooties are the heart cooties are the cooties are the everywhere But as I was saying, yeah, um, I like Virgos. Who come out the Virgos? Libras. Ugh. No thanks. Um, then Scorpios. Scorpios are a good time, but I wouldn't be in a relationship with a Scorpio. And Sagittarius. Child. Please. But Jay-Z is Sagittarius. If that says anything. I like Virgos also, but never dated one. How do you shoot your shot? Okay, so, girl, let me tell you how I shot my shot at him. So, I had seen him at, um, I had seen him in a club. We was at uh, Level. Yeah, we was at Level. Cindy, you a Sag? I mean, I, I feel like the girl Sagittarius are cute and, and nice, but I ain't, no, I ain't, no, no, I ain't dating no Sagittarius, child. Mm-mm. Mm -mm. No, but let me tell y'all how I shot my shot. So I seen him. I seen him from across the room. It burned. It burned on. Hold on, y'all. Let me see. Go put it in the 
garbage can outside and get another one. You got to put it on two minutes. Damn, it's going to smell like burnt popcorn in this house for three days. Okay, let me tell y'all how I shot my shot. So, I seen him from across the room, right? And I said, oh, he tall. He fine. I like him. He cute. And it was kind of a lot of people in the club, right? Oh, my Lord. This, this popcorn going to give me a headache. <clears throat> So, Karen put she wasn't paying attention. She put the microwave on twenty minutes. So, <laughs> mm. fuck, it's gonna smell like burnt popcorn in this house for a good week. So anyway, I seen him from across the room, and I walk. It was a lot of people in there, so I used it as an excuse to like bump up on bump up against him. And so as I was like scooting past. I was like, excuse me, excuse me. Oh, I don't mean to put my ass on you. I'm just trying to get back. And he was like, you good, you good. You can sit, you can stand right here if you want to. And he pulled me close. Yeah, and we started rapping and this had happened. So yeah, that's how you shoot your shot. It worked. Boiled orange peels. I gotta go get some oranges, child. What state would you move if you had an opportunity? Hmm. I think I'm good in here in Texas, honestly. Like I used to want to move to move back to San Diego and live in California, but man, a property tax there, I think they take out state tax in California. I just don't think that that would be a good place to live as an influencer. I don't understand why a lot of influencers move to L.A. That is so crazy to me. Like, why do you want to live, lose more money? Like, you could save so much money living in the South. Especially in Memphis or Tennessee. You don't even have to be Memphis. It could be Nashville. The property tax there is like so amazing no state tax uh property tax is super low you can get a big ass house for six hundred thousand five hundred six hundred thousand what would be like almost two million here because the property tax is low and the cost of uh the property is low cost of real estate is low here but it's not as low as tennessee tennessee oh my god you can get a beautiful house it's just the thing the thing about living in tennessee is there's not much to do but as far as like a forever home Tennessee, definitely. Peyton got ADHD. No, I got ADD. I'm not hyper. I do have an attention deficit, though. For sure. At least do a meet and greet in Colorado. Don't move here, though. It's nothing here for it to be so expensive. Slay with Carol. Oh, you got a channel? Let's go to Slay with Carol's channel. Oh, wow, Carol, you are so pretty. Yeah. Oh, I like that bag. That's a pretty bag. She uh, got a what's in my bag she posted a month ago. I like that Louis Vuitton bag. You are so pretty. Go follow her, y'all. Go subscribe to her. Slay with Kara. Is it Kara J or Kara J? I'm fitter. P and yo channel below. Yeah, click on her and go subscribe. Really, really pretty girl. Where's the next trip to? Oh, I had it in my head. Where? 
It was, it was, we got to get Calvin a passport first. And I heard they, they kind of backed up with um, processing the passport applications. But I had took a picture. Hold on. I, I was, I was going to think since you don't need a passport to go to Hawaii, I was thinking of taking to her to Hawaii because that honestly would be a full circle moment because the first time me and her daddy got together, like, beyond like our friendship because at first we was just like platonic friends we used to tell people on the boat we was cousins um and then when we went to hawaii like it just it happened i didn't even know it was going to happen but it happened so i was thinking like to take taking her to hawaii and it being like a full circle moment because whilst that's not the place that i actually conceived her that was where me and her daddy took our friendship to the next level so I was thinking of taking her to Hawaii since she don't need a passport to go there. But um, it was another place that I wanted to take her. You need a passport. I can't remember where it was, though. I'll keep y'all updated on it. We'll talk about it in the blog. Hey, D. Marie. I would love to move to Dallas, but that extreme weather, we don't really have extreme weather. Um, okay. Well, maybe, I don't know. If if you're afraid of a little tornadoes and a couple of ice storms and, you know, scorching heat, then yeah, totally. But it don't bother me. Birdie says, can't watch your videos without laughing. Peyton, you are hilarious. A little bit of sunshine. Thank you. Hey, I am Tamika Armstrong. Oh my God, I'm going to have a headache from this popcorn smell. Would you move to Houston? No, ma'am. ALR says, would you move to Houston? No, I would not. No. See, Dallas has dry heat. Houston has humidity. No. Houston also has hurricanes. No. I would much rather deal with the scorching heat, the dry heat, the bad drivers, and the tornadoes here than the hurricanes, the flooding, and the humidity in Houston. And you know they say if you love Dallas, then you won't like Houston. And if you love Houston, then you won't really care for Dallas. And I am totally that person. Like, I don't really care for Houston like this. I'll go to visit, but all I need is a weekend, and then I'm, I'm, I'm good coming on back. But as far as, like, diversity in uh, the food. I think Houston is a much better place for diversity as far as like, uh, you know, um, black people. Yeah. And uh, good food. Because Dallas is a lot of Tex-Mex. It's not a lot of like soul food places um, to eat here. Thank you to everybody that's buying Super Thanks. Thank you so much. Hey Payne, what would what advice what would advise some what would you advise someone to stay motivated with YouTube? I started my channel but never kept going. Um wow, that's interesting. <laughs> Consistency is really key. I know people say this all the time and a lot of people roll their eyes, but I'm gonna tell you for me to be vlogging every day. Consistency really is key. Like you see it. Yeah, it might mess up the analytics a little bit as far as your watch time because um, your videos aren't as long. But man, if you want to finesse the algorithm, vlog every day or at least be consistent. Like vlog. If you're going to do two videos a week, stick to the routine. Two videos a week. Do not skew away from it because that's how you're going to get in the algorithm for real. And the algorithm is is what's really going to, you know, push you into seeing how lucrative YouTube really is. Pay, I never understood what's the difference between a February Pisces and a March Pisces. 226. Um... I think uh, February Pisces are a little bit more outgoing. Y'all are a little bit more um, 
extroverted and March Pisces are very laid back and we're more introverted. That's that's just how I, I've seen it. Um because February Pisces got a little bit of that Aquarius in y'all, and Aquarius can be um Aquarius can be more outgoing. Like my ex is crazy because we when we would be in the house, he would be so quiet. I would almost think like something was wrong with him. I'd be like, babe, are you okay? You know, asking him every, like damn near every hour, babe, are you okay? And then when he get out, he literally a totally different person. He like the life of the party and turn into a fucking comedian. And I'm like, who are you? I'm so close to monetization. I just need to figure the direction of my channel. I would definitely say try different things when it comes to YouTube. There is no formula on how to become successful on YouTube. Don't let anyone that has become successful tell you that there is a specific formula to becoming successful. It's not. Whereas I might do vlogs and my vlogs do good. You may do videos on book reviews and become a millionaire next year and have fucking millions of subscribers because you're doing book reviews. Karen can get on Instagram. I mean, uh, YouTube right now, become a gamer and surpass me like in the a crazy amount of shorter, a short amount of time. Um, people can get on YouTube talking about ways to make more money and ways to save money, how to increase your credit score. You know, there are so many different, different niches that you can do on YouTube, DIYs, shower routines, feminine hygiene hauls. If y'all have paid attention to my daily diaries, I've done a little bit of all of that. And it's to show you that you can do different things. I'm really trying to show the people that want to do YouTube is that you can do different things. You do not have to do what you what you see everybody else doing and, and them becoming su successful because vlogs are really hard to get into. Vlogging is really, really hard to get into. Um, and then making your vlogs interesting and finessing the watch time and all of that stuff. It's, it's, it's very difficult to get into. I had no idea that my vlogs would take off when I started vlogging. I just did it because I ain't had nothing to do. And the girls that I watched, which at the, at the time was Aaliyah, Brianna, and Kyra, um, those girls that I watched, when I watched them, I said, you know, I really like watching their vlogs. I think that they're super interesting. At the same time, though, I do not have the uh, the finances to live the type of lifestyle and vlog that type of lifestyle. I never, never tried to even compare the two. You know what I'm saying? I said, okay, if I'm going to vlog, I'm going to vlog my life as is where I am right now. And then, yes, I have evolved into a different type of lifestyle, but at the same time, I've tried to remain the same and, and, and I didn't even have to try. Like I, I'm still me. I'm still me. I just, you know, I just got a little more coin. It's all. But, um, when you, when you get into vlogging, I, I, I think it's important not to compare, you know, if you have to, um, stop watching certain people, because if you find yourself comparing yourself then you'll dis you'll in you'll you'll discourage yourself. You'll become discouraged because um, you feel like nobody's watching you or or your life isn't the same. So, you know, I've had people to tell me that, um, like straight up, straight up, message me and say, you know, they had to stop watching me because they started to become envious of my life, and I didn't feel I didn't feel like. Um, offended by it like I was like sis if there's something that you felt that you needed to do so you, your, your life could be better and you could focus on you like I totally agree that there's something I've had to do that I've had to do that because you will get caught up in um feeling like your life is inadequate or you're not doing enough you'll start thinking that you got to live your life on a deadline um I think somebody Somebody left a comment under this this post for me, you know, asked me some questions. She she said she was 40 and um, she felt like her life isn't going anywhere and that, you know, she's getting a late start. And there's no there's no deadline to this shit. There's no deadline. You could start whatever you want, whenever you want. 
it, there's no deadline to it. I think what's most important is staying grounded, staying motivated. If one thing don't work, try something else. Do something else. Like I tell people all the time, me and McKenna, me and that's, that's my girl. McKenna didn't start vlogging. McKenna's killing vlogs now, but McKenna did not start vlogging, bro. She started she started doing shower routines, and shower routines pushed her into vlogging. Now she killing vlogging. Like, stop talking y'all self out of doing different niches just because y'all want to vlog. Okay, let vlogging be your end goal, but do other stuff while you working on vlogging. <clears throat> because it's di it's a different audience out there for everybody. You know, it's it's people out there that don't watch vlogs. Like, why why the fuck would I watch somebody else's life? You know what I'm saying? I don't want to watch nobody else's life. But then you got people will that will literally binge watch fitness vlogs all day, or what I eat in a day vlogs all day, mukbangs all day, shower routines all day. I'll be vlogging every day in July. Oh, my God. I should have never trusted her to make popcorn. The living room. This living room could be stanky for a week. Have you decided on whether or not you would get your filler back in your lips? Uh, my appointment is Thursday. And, yes, I'm doing it. But it's going to be subtle. It's not going to be crazy. It's going to be subtle. What do you think the next wave is for YouTube besides vlogging? So people think vlogging is the wave right now. It's not. It's podcast. Vlogging, vlogging wasn't vlogging wasn't the wave. The the wave for the um the COVID, the whole COVID situation, the wave was podcast. Vlogging is not the wave. Right now it's podcast. So I don't know. I don't know, because they never offered fucking content creators $50,000 to start vlogging. They were like paying people to start podcasts, and I hate podcasts. I hate podcast culture. Can't stand it. Would never do it. Like, I've even considered doing something similar, and the, the title of my show be, is It's Not a Podcast, because I don't like podcasts. I don't like that people have a platform to spew out opinions and criticize people in divide and conquer like i feel like podcast is divide and conquer but that's just me hold on let me scroll back up okay stephanie b my son is autistic and his channel is key and funny and they keep denying him every time we apply for monetization i cannot understand why do you still offer help with youtube i'd pay for help Hmm. DM me and let me put you in contact with my YouTube manager and see what she can do because I I don't know why they would do that. Especially if he's like surpassed everything that he's supposed to have done in order to become monetized. Like, you know, there's there's a little few guidelines. They they implemented that like after I already became a YouTube partner. So I didn't have to do that. But um, yeah, DM me on Instagram and I'll put you in contact with my YouTube manager. I'll give you her um email so you can you can talk to her about it. Lovely Jade says, do you read on Lipstick Alley? If so, is there anything you'd want to address? We don't always agree with everything you do, but I feel like your thread was very positive. Well, until after the AF VK collab, then it got weird and super negative. Um, I know I don't I don't engage with um Lipstick Alley. You know, I think that that is I think if you want to upset yourself and disturb your your peace, then hell yeah, go on Lipstick Alley and read what they write about you. But uh, that's not something that I encourage. That's not something that I do. Um, people are always going to have opinions about everything people do. 
or opinions about me or opinions about anybody. You know what I'm saying? Like they talked about Jesus. So I ain't got, I don't, I don't care what's being said about me at the end of the day. As long as I can pay my bills, it's all that matters. February Pisces are more shy. March Pisces are more outgoing. Oh, no, I don't know about this, sis. Yeah, Peyton, but your subscribers bond with you, real folks, for real folks. Mm hmm. Jones, Family Matters, love you. Thanks for the vlog with Jamima. We love you both. Thank you. Thank you to everybody who has bought um, Super Thanks, too. I did get discouraged when I see my subscribers not going up. You know, um, that YouTube used to allow you to hide your subscriber count. And when I came back to YouTube, that's what I did. They don't allow you to do it anymore. But when I came back to YouTube in uh, at the beginning of COVID, at the height of COVID, I hid my subscriber count for. I hid my subscriber count up until I reached 100,000 uh, subscribers because people would always come to my videos and ask why I didn't have uh, a more subscribers. Um, and they always wonder, like, why I didn't show my subscriber count, because I really feel like that didn't matter. I think that people will. And I really hate that YouTube changed this because I, I think that it was a benefit to being able to hide your subscriber count. So people would engage with your content genuinely, not because they thought you was somebody or because you had a lot of uh, subscribers. You know, they would genuinely engage with your content and watch you. So I, I don't know. I, I feel like this this feedback that I probably will uh, shoot over to YouTube and, and tell them that they should they should allow people to hide their subscriber account like they used to. I think I I feel that it was beneficial. Let's see. I wish all content creators blessings because it is a difficult journey and I wanted to give up, but I know families and subscribers will find hope if I press forward. Yes. I remember when you when you hid them pay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hid them for a long time. I want to start back filming, but I hate feeling like no one is watching. I think you just, I think you pay. Hey, what if you don't like people in your business? So if you're a private person, I don't think um, blogging is the way to go. I think that there are other niches where you can remain private. You can do get ready with me, try on hauls, um, shower routines, um, Honestly, I don't even know why, how, and, and this is just talking about gossip blogs and gossip bloggers that talk about other bloggers. I don't even know how, out of all the bloggers that there are, I don't even know how I even got in the group. I, I don't know what made me get in the group. You know what I'm saying? I'm just being myself and like minding my business. So I don't even know how I got in the group, but... <sighs> If you don't like people in your business, man, don't don't do YouTube because the switch up be real. The switch up be real, real. Excuse me. I was a piece of meat in my teeth. It bothering the shit out of me. OK, it says, how do you next question? How do you feel about women going 50 50 with their hubby or long term boyfriend? Um. You know, didn't uh, Gabrielle Union just go viral for this whole 50-50 talk? I didn't watch her whole take on it, but honestly, I feel like when you marry, it's not necessarily 50-50. Um, if you both are taking care of the home, you know, you look at the man, to, traditionally, you look at the man to be the provider and the, the wife to be the nurturer. Um, but I think in today's, I think today both can take on each role. You know, you have a lot of stay at home dads now. Um, a lot of women are the breadwinners in a lot of their relationships, too. Um, you definitely have to have be set up in a relationship where if something happens with 
one of the other party's finances or job or for whatever reason, like, you know, um, Dwayne Wade, I'm not sure if he's retired or not. I don't, I don't follow his career, but what if he got injured? You know what I'm saying? What if he, what if he couldn't provide financially because he was injured or whatever, you know, you, you, sh I think, I think sometimes it's necessary to make sure that you're equally yoked with someone that could take the slack. If, if there's lack of better words, um, take care of home. I'm going to say take care of home when you can't. So it's not necessarily 50, 50 when you're married. Now, if you in just a, like a regular girlfriend, boyfriend relationship, you don't really have a lot of assets to protect, you know? So if you find yourself shacking up with somebody, I don't know. I, I don't, I honestly don't know. I, I, I wouldn't know. I ain't been in a relationship in so long, y'all. In the last relationship that I was in, it definitely was not 50-50 because I was the breadwinner in that relationship. Um, he didn't help at all financially when, when it was time to pay the rent. That nigga was starting negotiating with me about like, <laughs> it, it, it was crazy because he knew how much the rent was and he was living with me and it would always turn into a negotiation. He would never give me 50-50 on a rent. And even when I was in my marriage, it wasn't 50-50 because while we did split the bills down the middle, I still paid for all of Karen's daycare when she was a baby in daycare. So, yeah, I ain't never really did 50-50, to be honest. So, I don't know. I can't speak on 50-50. I think if I was in a marriage... It, it would be nice if I had a, a husband who provided financially and, t and paid all 100% of the bills. But shit, I ain't never had it, so I can't speak on it. I can't speak on it. Now, given this was in my 20s, so don't judge. But as far as now... I wouldn't even say in a marriage is 50-50. I think y'all just both taking care of home. D. Wade said he made a mistake and told his wife that this was his house. He said Gabrielle Union says she wants to go 50-50 because she never wants to hear them hear him say that again. Mm, that's deep. You know... That uh that actually happened on uh that was an episode in Sex in the City too. If I'm not mistaken. Thank you so so Steph. Yeah, that was an episode on Sex in the City where I think um Carrie went to big and she wanted to, you know, have something of her own because you remember when she was with Aiden and Aiden, she didn't want to marry Aiden. So Aiden was trying to kick her out of her, her brown, her, well, it wasn't a brownstone because it was an apartment, but her apartment. Hold on. Yeah, I can understand it, though. I can definitely understand it. Tip's trying to start channel, but has a nine to five. Um, hey, Miss Queen D. Um, as far as tips on trying to start a channel and you have a regular job, there are several YouTubers who do that, by the way. Um, I would start out with, you know... Um, Maybe some feminine hygiene hauls, shower routines, um, day to day work life. I I remember when I when I watched Kyra when she had first started vlogging, she she had a job, um, and those vlogs were super interesting. You know, she getting up real early, getting ready for work and stuff like that. I think I think you can do that. I definitely think it's it's doable. You don't always have to. Um, be doing YouTube full time. I think it actually is is more real. Not not saying my life isn't realistic, um, because it is. But I think there is a a, a uh, niche for everybody out there. So having a a nine to five and doing day to day vlogging. 
that's that's a niche as well. And I think a lot of people like watching those, like um, Paige and Dr. Dre, one of my homegirls on YouTube. She's a full time doctor, like she delivers babies, and she still does YouTube. Um, there are nurses that do YouTube and they show their day to day life. I think the, those those vlogs are super interesting, and they still somehow make it like an aesthetic type of vlog. So, yeah. Karen is the sweetest teenager. That's my baby. Thank you. We supposed to be sipping. You ain't take now sip yet. I, I was drinking when I was filming the the um the bit the video, and then I came downstairs. And after I finished editing and edit, and as it was getting ready to go, uh, as it was uploading, I decided, man, just go live, and talk on live, and we got. 3,637 people in here, and it's going to be 11 o'clock at night. That's big. Payton, you want all your bills paid. You have to divest. I don't want all my bills paid. I mean, my bills paid. Well, I'm, I, don't, I don't understand what you mean. I don't need, I don't need a man to do that. I need, I want, I need God. I need God. I want, at this point right now, consistency, communication, and a confidant. I don't, I don't need a man to pay my bills. It'd be nice, but realistically, this shit ain't gonna happen. That's not what I attract. I think there are women out there that attract men like that. But you have to be careful with men that that you attract that are like that because they those men look at you as disposable. Like if I can buy her, I can buy her, I can buy her, I can buy her, I can get rid of her and I can buy her. You know what I'm saying? One of the scariest things that you can do to a man is leave. But if he paying for you, if he's buying you, you can't leave him. He, he has all the control. That's, that's just how I feel. If you disagree, you could disagree. But that's just how I feel. You give a man control when he can pay for you. Just want to say good night to you. But good night, Linda. I'm a teacher and we'll be vlogging there too once I go back. Teacher, car rents, here I come. Mercedes famous. That's fine. That's that's fun, but be careful. But be careful because um a lot of parents are trolls. Which brings me to our next question. How do you manage trolls' impact on your mental as an influencer in business? So I think if you allow trolls to have an impact on your life, they will. On, on and on your mental, they will. But you gotta understand, a troll, a troll is gonna be your most dedicated viewer, sometimes even subscriber, even if they aren't subscribed. I think you can have your notifications turned on even if you're not a subscriber. I don't know. I, I, can you? I, I want to say you can. Um, they're gonna watch the whole video. They may dislike the video, but they're going to watch the whole video. So that's great for your watch time. They're going to watch every video. That's great for your views. And they're going to come in. That's great for your engagement. Because all of those things help push you into the algorithm. So um, the only impact that a troll has, and I, and I don't think that they realize this, is that they help you grow. They help you make money. They help you become more successful on this platform. So as far as my mental, shit, thank you, girl. Thank you. You can't, you can't let no, you can't let no troll get to you because the troll gonna be way more dedicated than a PayPal or a gym or a hoochie or a girl or a bombshell. <sighs> Trolls are essential to growth and success.
Did I answer all of these? I think I did. Oh, okay. So the next one says, oh wait, let's let's see how we what we talking about. Sometimes I feel like my videos are overlooked because I don't look like the really pretty influencer type. I get so discouraged. Yeah, don't you can't think like this, sis. You can't think like this, sis. Cause I mean, what is a really what is an influencer type, a pretty influencer type? There's really no like picture perfect influencer. You have so many people from different walks of life, different um, uh, ethnicities, different races. Everybody is beautiful in their own way. And it's a lot of people that have um, super large platforms and large subscriber accounts. I, I, I don't I don't think I don't think looks matter. I think it's personality and just being likable and relatable. Good night, Andrea. April Danielle said, pretty privilege is a thing. Let's not act like it's not. Uh, well, I mean, if you think it's a thing, it's a thing. I don't think it's a thing because I'm not pretty in each and every one of my fucking vlogs. The last vlog with Anthony, my skin looked like shit. That's why I didn't vlog yesterday. That's why there is no vlog today because my skin looked like absolutely shit. So, I mean, I think if you, if you put that energy out there, that pri pretty privilege is a thing, you will attract that type of energy. And if you put that energy out there, that white privilege is a thing, you will continue to run into that type of energy. I don't put energy into shit like that. I think it's about being relatable. I think it's about being likable. Um, and, and, and just fun to watch. You know what I'm saying? It, it's it, Your engagement... <sighs> I hate, I hate, I hate this topic. I hate this topic. We are going to talk about something else because I hate talking about pretty privilege. Like who started this? That's, an, that's another, that's another one of them topics about divide, to, to divide, to divide and conquer. Good night, Dr. Sherry. I mean, sh 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 Shara, Shara. Tatiana said, I don't think she's talking about skin. She's talking about the way, quote unquote, you look. But I agree. If you're relatable and funny and good personality and good content, you will succeed. I don't know. I, don't, I hate this topic. Let's, let's talk about something else. I do not want to talk about pretty privilege. I really don't. I don't know who ever made that term up, but God. It seems like every year we find another way to divide and conquer and, and cause people to question themselves and feel insecure about themselves. I don't want to talk about it. How do you start your soft girl chapter? Um, I feel like as a woman, we're innately soft, right? Like the soft, this soft girl chapter and soft girl era I think it's it was a thing. It's a thing like the that that girl era, all of these different eras, the clean girl era. I think innately we are all of these things. You are that girl. You are a soft girl. You are a clean girl. You are it girl. Um, exuding that. I think when it comes to being soft, though, because a lot of men have again another divide and conquer. Uh, thing a lot of men have you know placed this women are being masculine everybody acting masculine i think if you're taking care of your home if you're taking your trash out if you're taking if you're washing your car you're making sure all your bills paid that's not being masculine that's just being an adult good night y'all that's just being an adult but i think when you are around a man who allows your femininity to flourish then you can be soft so you know if you're around a man, yeah, you're going to be soft anyway, naturally. But if you're around a boy, a burden on you, then, yeah, it's going to feel like you being masculine because you you being a provider. You're being the man. And you don't want to be the man, but shit, somebody got to do it. Sarah 
soft girl era is getting rid of toxic people. I think being a soft girl is is doing anything that you're supposed to do that makes you feel good as a woman. You know what I'm saying? Why is YouTube playing commercial during your live? Cause girl, I still gotta make me a little corn, girl. I've always been a soft girl. I think we all are soft girls. I don't think that's something that we have to try to be. I don't think that's something that we have to work on being. I think everybody is soft when you're around a man. When you're with a man that allows your femininity to flourish, yeah, you're going to be soft. <laughs> Thank you, Mika. Are you still brunching and dining with local PayPal's? I just moved to the Dallas area. Yes, ma'am, but not in the month of June just because uh, we're still getting Karen settled in and I'm doing daily diaries. I, I just honestly, I don't really have a lot of time to do anything. Um, so I don't want to commit to meeting with anyone or de doing dinner with anyone. Um, and then I don't make it because I, I that happened last time I was doing mayhem and uh, sis got real mad at me. She unfollowed me. She had her sister message me this long uh, comment under the comment saying how she sent me an itinerary for her birthday and I didn't show up to nothing. Girl, I was trying to get my house together. I was furnishing my house and I literally was vlogging every day for the month of May. Like, I don't even understand how she didn't understand it. But, you know, a lot of people don't. A lot of people don't. They They, they lack empathy. They lack empathy. The men are too aggressive up here to allow for us to be soft and secure. Doses of Tony. People confuse soft with luxury, not realizing soft can be with self. Take care of self to be soft. I feel you. True. I woke up feeling low today, so I put on a colorful dress, my favorite perfume, and went shopping. I made sure to smile at everyone and walk with my head high and shoulders back, made hubby. Good night, Lisa. Did she hire you for an appearance, not a whole itinerary? No. No, she but she I I remember I remember she sent me a whole itinerary and you know um I couldn't make it. I, I told her that I would try. But I, I I wasn't able to make it. I was looking so y'all doing mayhem. I have videos where literally my wig wasn't even glued all the way down. It was sliding back. But I was in and out of like all these different, you know, going to at home, going to home goods, going to Home Depot. Like I looked a mess trying to get my house together. Like that was my that was my content was trying to finish my house for the month of May. And she didn't understand it. She got very upset about that. Yeah. She sent me an itinerary to come to her birthday. Best of it's every night for the whole weekend. Her sister said the reason why I come is because I didn't come is because uh, she's a small YouTuber. If I was one of the girls, I would have came. That's what I'm saying. The switch up be so real. I you, you can't even let shit get to you no more because the, the switch up be insane. Would you consider doing a meet and greet with a small group of PayPal's at like Dave and Buster's? Mm, so I, I've, I've said this on a previous live. What I like when I like, I like doing um, the intimate meet and greets where I just meet y'all one on one, and then, um, you know, I'm doing a meet and greet in Miami at the fashion show, and then I'm also doing a meet and greet on June 23rd here in Dallas at Joe Malone. Um, but I like intimate settings because I feel like those allow me to get you, to get to know you a little bit better and plus I get more time with you. Peyton, are you coming to Miami Dade, Florida next month? I'll be in July. I'll be there in July. Yeah. 
Payton, you are so kind and have a beautiful spirit. I love how you are all about loving self and not letting social media determine your well-being. You're a great mother and friend. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Girl, when will you be in Miami? I missed that info. Um, July. Let's see. Oh, where's my, where's my calendar? July 8th. Saturday, July 8th. It's a fashion show. Miami Swim Week. Okay, next question. We still on Instagram questions. I ain't even get to the YouTube questions, so we're going to have to go live again for the YouTube questions. Uh, she says, have you ever had a falling out with another influencer? <laughs> Baby, y'all be wanting to teach her. Y'all be wanting the absolute tea. So, yes, I have. Um, and what I have just come to realize when it comes to this platform, sometimes the only thing you have in common with a lot of the people that's on this platform is that you hold a camera in your right hand. That's all I say about that. You know? It is what it is. Next question is how to date multiples without forming an attachment to one early on. That's a good ass question. Um, well, I think I think when you're dating, you are supposed to date multiple people. You definitely are su supposed to date multiple people because um, it allows it allows you to see what you want and what you don't want. If you're dating one person. You can you can have like clouded judgment because you're only dating one person. But if you date multiple people, it allows you to see, um, you know, analyze like what you like, what you don't like, what you need, what you don't need. Um, you, you need to see a person's effort. And if you don't, you need to go ahead and wash your hands with it, because one thing a person going to do is show you effort or not. Um, as far as forming an attachment to one, when you dating multiple, multiple people, I think that's going to be hard because you like who you like. And, um, if you got someone that's showing, that's putting forth the effort, being consistent, communicating, and then you dating maybe two other people who not, of course, you're going to like the person that's putting for the most effort. But then again, you might like the person that's not because we do tend to gravitate towards toxicity. You know, um, if you haven't been working on yourself like you need to be, you may actually like because you. I think that's what abandonment issues. If you have abandonment issues, you might actually like when a man ghosts you and uh, you have to keep reaching out or you have to keep asking, like, why you don't take me on dates? Now you actually comparing him to other guys. You the only one that don't text me and da 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 da. If he wanted to do it, he's gonna do it. But you might actually like him the most because he's not. Um, it's, it's crazy how we, it's, it's so crazy how we do stuff like that. Um, but you are going to get attached. It's hard. Especially, even if you date, even if you date one person, if you dating four people, you're going to get attached to somebody. It's just, it's just natural. You like what you like. So I don't even know. I don't, I don't even have any advice on it. Tips for dating while you work at home and are a homebody in ambivert. Oh no, sis. Thank you, Ray. Dating is very hard. Now, if you dating, so I feel like uh Samaria tips for dating while you work at home and are a homebody. I feel like you may enjoy uh online dating and that may work out well for you. However, you just have to keep in mind that there are a lot of men on online dating platforms who are in relationships. So you just have to keep that in mind. And I'd also think that we call it back home in Memphis politicking. 
when you politicking on the phone with a man that you met online because you don't like going out that much, you'll find yourself falling in love a whole lot faster. It's almost like um, what's that show? Love is blind, where they go and they they they're in the pods for like two weeks and they only talk to a person um, and hear their voice and stuff like that. That's that's how I look at online dating. So you have to be real careful if you don't like going outside. You have to be real careful with online dating. You need to get out the house, sis. I, I understand you're an ambivert and a homebody, but get out the house. You need your vitamin D, and it's just good for you. You know what I'm saying? I feel as though I need to put myself out there more, but I've been disliking men. Laugh out loud. I need to heal more because, goodness, yes, yes. If if you aren't done healing, don't try to date. Don't try to date. How you feel about doubling back? I have an ex applying pressure. Um, I feel like as far as I don't know your story, but I know if he an ex, he an ex for a reason. So I, I wouldn't I wouldn't allow him to spin the block because if y'all were meant to be, y'all would still be together. That's just my advice on it. Ex is really never really I, I I don't I have never experienced an ex come back and it literally be like a night and day situation. If if I had an ex that was traumatic that caused me trauma and pain. Generally, when he comes back, he just opens that wound back up. It is like more pain, you know, more scar tissue. So I'd be really careful with it. I honestly would. He could be applying pressure just because he see you out here with motion. You know, you might be dating. Um, he might see that the grass ain't really greener on the other side because a lot of times men kind of go through this mode where like okay i'm ha i'm happy with her but then they see something else and they think that it's gonna be a certain way when they uh when they get over there and she turned out to be a headache realizing that you were a great woman and now he wants you back so be careful with them exes man them exes terrible I got a mold remover on my face and my stitch scar is a little raised. Will it eventually flatten? It's been six weeks and it's seeming bumpy. Did you experience this? Uh-uh. You might have to go get a steroid shot. Or they might have to remove it again because this, 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 this has to be cut off again. This keloid. This was a keloid before it got cut off. And then it came back. It was flat. And then it came back. So now I got to be cut off again. Now, if he Darius from Love Jones, I'm spinning the block. But let's talk about Love Jones, the movie, right? Because honestly, like, if you really, if you really was put in that situation, let's think about it. So Mia, she tests Darius to see if he would care if she would go. First of all, she shouldn't have did that shit anyway because she knew she ain't like her ex any damn way. But her friend gave her bad fucking advice. One, because she was like, go. And if he don't, if he if he try to play it cool, like he don't care if you go, then go. She shouldn't have did that because I think Darius was really in his feelings. So then she comes back and she see Darius done moved on then they get back together. Then she go out with his friend. Child, Love Jones is just a terrible ass example. Because how the fuck you go out with Bill Bellamy and then he disrespectful to you at the party, bring you to the party and disrespect. Mia was doing the most. See, now I need to rewatch Love Jones at my big age. You know what? I think when we watched it when it first came out, Maybe we didn't see what we what I see now, but I see what I see now is Mia was kind of narcissistic in that movie. In my opinion, she was a narcissist. How you gonna go back to your ex, then come back in town? You see Darius done moved on, then you go out with his friend, one of his close friends at that. Come to the party. This man lying on you like he done 
smashed. No, it's too much. Ask Obama said, I damn near know every line in the movie. She tried it, but going with his friend, ain't no way I would have taken her back. I love me some Darius, though. Right. Like, wrong is wrong now. Been talking to this guy for three months and just found out he's married. Sick about it. So, if you talk to him three months, when you find out, you say you just found out, it should, you should be over it around about middle of August. No. Beginning of August. Right about beginning of August, you should be over it. But you devil Tasha Wiggins, you definitely need to go ahead and get back out there and start dating so you can like somebody else. Hell, slide in somebody's DMs. Hell. Slide in Chris Brown DM shit. I'll give, I, I give you a pass. Go ahead. You got to start liking somebody else. It's going gonna, it's gonna to take you about a month and a half to get over them because it take half the time you like the person to get over because y'all remember little little 28 year old let's see how long did i like him i think i liked him for what a week yeah i, I, I say about the next week i was i was done i say about the next week i was over i don't even go to his page anymore Hey, Rochelle, girl, you had me cracking up in your last vlog. I need to finish it. That dress was stunning. You did that. Hey, where my girl at? I wish we could go live with other YouTubers. Come on, YouTube, with the fucking upgrade, the update. Put something cute on and get out the house. I know they're right. That's right. If you saw the Tinder swindler, then you know. Get outside, my log. Yeah, it took me a week. Bundy Blue rewatches movies from when. Karen, yeah. what you doing, babe? Oh, okay. My little internet crush finally noticed me laugh out loud. We be flirting and stuff. Ooh, who shot the first shot? So, so stiff. So, so stiff. I like that name. Says my mom says oil up your legs and put some shorts on and go out. I know that's right. Let me tell you the perfect oil to use. Baby, use that whey hair and body oil in the Monroe's, Monroe's scent. Listen, let me see if I can still see my oil on my legs. I still see it a little bit. Man, that's some good body oil, baby. Also, come sutra. But see, with but 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 the way Ray. The way skin potion be selling out with Kama Sutra, you got to use that sparingly, okay? You can't use it all up, can't get crazy. You got to use it up sparingly, okay? Because he gonna it's going to sell out and it's going to be hard for you, you to get. But check this out. It, 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 it's, it'll be on your shelves in Sephora and Ulta very soon. Very soon. Trust me. There is a big delay on here versus the television. My perfume line is coming. Thank you for saying Avino. Folks going crazy all of a sudden. I've been using it. I had to back up bottles of Kama Sutra I gave away to Mother's Day and I'm sad about it. I'm sad for you, sis. It absorbs too fast, Peyton, for $32. I tried it yesterday in Target. You got to put it on when you first get out the shower. Like, you got to put it on while you still a little moist. You can't put it on dry skin. You got to put it on a little moist. Why you still a little moist so it could, your, 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 your skin can soak it up, you know? But shit, it, for my eczema, that's some real good old body oil. Real good. 
How do you deal with friendships that have grown apart when you feel they are not 50-50 and try to remain understanding that people are busy but feeling like they're always making excuses? I think when it comes to friendships, uh, as as you get older, um, friendships become a little bit more difficult to maintain, especially when you are, you know, when you live in your life traveling, you got your own businesses and stuff like that. They become uh, difficult to maintain, but putting forth the effort to at least communicate once every every now and then says a lot. Um, but you know, some friendships you do just grow apart, but that doesn't mean y'all are no longer friends. Me and Quita, that's my best friend. Me and Quita ain't talked since my birthday. It was in March. We don't talk every day. We don't, we don't even really talk every month, but the love ain't gone nowhere. And it's not to say that we've grown apart. Quita got her life. I got my life. We both in our fucking forties. We are, we ain't, we ain't teenagers anymore. We don't have reasons to stay on the phone all day, all day long, gossiping, talking about stuff and talking about boys and stuff like that. You know, that's, that's life. That's life. But I think when it comes to uh, friendships, some of the best friendships, some of the best of friends don't talk every day. Y'all, I smell so good. Say that, pay. <laughs> Y'all, I smell so good. My Ulta order arrives Wednesday. I got the fragrance too. Any advice for a gay guy trying to date? It's going to be easier for you than it is for me. I know that much. So I ain't got no advice. I swear. Sometimes I wish I was a boy. If I were a boy, I think I could understand. Because, baby, the way y'all be jumping in relationships, listen. Mad. Upset. I got a problem with it. You know what I'm saying? Like, put me on, hook me up. <laughs> All right, y'all. I think it's time. We don't been on. We don't been on live for two minutes. Damn. I mean, damn. I said two minutes. Two hours. Damn near thirty minutes. I don't want to stay on here because, like, we gonna have to do a zoom. We gonna have to do zoom. Get live. Get live on zoom. YouTube ain't with it. We know we don't have to get live on Zoom so we can sing together. Have a whole karaoke night. That'll be a vibe. And then maybe I could do go, we could do live and I don't know how the hell we would would we do that. Maybe I don't know. I don't know. You know what? Google need to buy Zoom like they bought YouTube. That way it can mesh and we could have like a conference on YouTube. You can do that on YouTube with StreamYard. Oh, see, I don't know. I don't know. This is my first time going live. StreamYard will help you do a Zoom would be dope. Uh, yeah, yeah. All I want to do is Zoom, Zoom. Y'all funny. Peyton got half the world in this live. Girl, no, I don't. But it's definitely more people in this live than it be on my Instagram. I have a roundabout. Round about this time, she had two hours. 24 minutes right about this time i have um probably like a hundred and some people on instagram on my instagram I and mean, when it first started it'd be jumping but it still don't be this many people this is pretty good 2687 likes thank y'all so much thank y'all so so much i i i may leave this one up for the people to watch I may leave it up. We're gonna see how we're gonna see how it uh how it work out with the analytics. Shit, I might do this all the time. Hell. But um, yeah, thank y'all so much. We're gonna go ahead and end this live. Thank you for sending the questions. Um, I may so we, we're still gonna do tipsy talk Tuesdays, and the next one might actually just be a video, unless y'all wanna do tipsy talk Tuesdays, 
and we do lives like this and we, you know, just talk about any and every old thing. Y'all can send me questions on YouTube. I mean, on uh, Instagram for me to uh, in topics. And then we talk about the topics and discuss in the, the chat like that. If y'all want to do it, what y'all think? Give me a thumbs up if y'all want to do that. Tipsy Talk Tuesdays once a month because this is a lot. This is a lot. But once a month, if y'all want to do Tipsy Talk Tuesdays, let me know. We'll have our drink, put our pajamas on, you know what I'm saying, pop our collar, you know what I'm saying, and uh, get in here and chit-chat. Okay, yeah, we're seeing a lot of thumbs up. This is great. Wow. Okay, yeah. I love it. Okay, well, that's it for tonight, folks. Now I'm going to go in here and try to figure out how to get this popcorn smell out of my furniture. I love y'all. Good night. <laughs>